Hello everyone, Jerry Riz here, coming to you with another video, and today I'm back with an updated video from my last week's video about the future overclocking featuring the Ryzen 7 2700X and the X470 Chai Chi from ASRock. Now, let's get back into the computer here. As you can see, uh, we still have the same setup, just a new background. I've made a few changes, and we're seeing spikes, you know, still to 4.5 and up to 4.6 in some cases. Now, the changes I've made have been because the X470 Tai Chi has gotten a new BIOS update. The last time I was doing it, I was on 1.3. This is 1.35a. This is, has some new patches, and I was able to actually get some more stable memory out of it. As you can see, right now I'm running DDR4 3328. Now, the last time I ran this, I was only able to get 3050 because I was only able to have... 2933 with the 104 overclock for the base clock. Now, if we go over here, you still I see I still have the 104 overclock, and like I said here, DDR4 3328. But like I said, that is basically DDR 30, 3200 just with the extra clock from the base clock. My settings, I did have to like kind of relax my timings a little bit just to get it to run at 3200, but it is worth it because the faster speeds do make a little bit of a difference. Like I've like originally it's supposed to be a 3200 kit where it's 16, 18, 18, 18, 34, but you know 20, 22, 22, 54 um, is what's needed to make this kit run at 3200 on Ryzen. This is not Samsung B die. But I will be getting some Samsung B die to test, but I did want to make sure I could get it above 3200 just for these tests with the new BIOS, and I was able to. One of the other new things I've come across, and like people in the community have been really, really great, um, like on the Reddit, and since I got such really great comments on this last video, I had to do an update. So in the advanced settings here, we have an AMD CBS this is the option we want to go into for some different and more interesting uh, options. So if we go into there, you'll see we do have some Zen Common options, but the one you can't really quite see, but it does say Northbridge IO Common Options. That's what we want to go into, and when we go into it, you'll see we do have some few features here, but the one we really want to look at is for the Precision Boost Overdrive configuration. Now this is something that was in the BIOS, but I wasn't quite aware that was in there. Like I said, thanks for the community for showing it to me. Um, and when you go into that, it does leave you to a screen that says if you accept or decline um, this option. Now this is because you're bringing your AMD processor, processor out of specifications, like where AMD doesn't want you to bring it, at least currently, because the overdrive option is not currently available in the um, Ryzen Master right now, because I think they're still testing it, but the, inside the BIOS, you are able to tweak this right now, but you are bringing it out of spec. This is, if you do this, you're avoiding a warranty, just to let you know. Now in here, uh, this is usually set to auto, but I set it to enable and I set the scaler to auto because I did see the best like tweaks and everything, like the best results from leaving it out. If I put it to anything more, it brought the voltages way up and I didn't really see that much of a gain anywhere. But you do want to set this to enable because I it did boost my voltages by about 0 0.01 volts and it did make my system stay more stable overall at the higher clocks. So if we go back to here, if we go back into the system, like I said, we have 4.5 as our max, 4.6 down here. That's an outlier, but we're still seeing those same uh, in the balance power mode going down to here. Now, let's go into Cinebench and run just the CPU multi-core. We can go in here and we can see it does boost 4.2 across the board Super easy. These are the same same conditions I had the last time I tested this chip. Let's wait for it to finish. Obviously, it's super stable. 4.2, no fluctuations whatsoever. Okay, great. See, it says 1846. Now, that is the multi-core score, but that is with a whole bunch of other programs still active in here. So 1846, with all those programs active, is pretty great because last time I got it was 
1879. Uh, that was off camera, but I got 1879 with the last options, but that was with no programs running, what's running whatsoever. So if we go back in here, as you can see, like I said, we went back down to the base clock. Let's see what the single Korg does. Just, I'm not going to let it run the whole time because it does take a lot of time to run the single core, but let's let this run and see what our, what our cores go to. All right, 4.4 is around the average. What I've been seeing, 4.3 and a half, 4.4. It does bounce around from different core to core, but you do see it 4.4 and a half, 4.3, 4.4 is where I've been seeing single core scores with this setup, and it's been rock solid. So let me just cancel this out. Like I said, I'm not going to let it run the whole time. I don't want to save. But what I want to show you is this. When I have this thing, like I said, at the 104 megahertz uh, bus clock, with those options, with the, op with the precision boost overdrive set, like I said, my uh, my memory is clocked at th about 3326 is what it's clocked at. If we go down to like the temperatures, temperatures all look good. Our voltages all look spot on. But yeah, so that's where we're at. Now, if I'm not going to turn it all off now, but I'll show you what my Cinebench scores were when I did have all the scores turned off, all the programs turned off. Now this right here is 1902, and that's with the same thing at about 4.2 plus gigahertz, automatically clocking with everything else set in auto, just a precision boost overdrive. Um, and what we were able to get was 1902 and 185 single core. That's pretty great for non overclocking. This is with the chip overclocking itself, just turning on precision remote boost to enable and getting my memory up to the, the to the right spec. I was able to get it up there because I did increase system on chip voltage a little bit to get it stable, but it's been pretty good. And that's with the 104 base clock. Now I did see some problems running 104 when I did add some more PCI lanes more, well, I should say more PCIe cards. That's because some of the PCIe lanes are go through uh, the chipset, the X470 chipset. They don't automatically just go through the, to the uh, CPU. Now, what, at 103, I did see markably better stability. So if I do leave it at 103, I do see a slight difference in the cinnamon score. It's down about 20 points. But the single core is only down one point. Uh, this right here shows that at 103, it does still boost close to these numbers. It does get the 4.5 at the at 103, the BCLK bus clock at 103. It does get the 4.5. It doesn't get the 4.6 like here, but uh, it does all the same things, and that's where I've been most stable, and it's been working the best for me. All right, this is Joey Riz. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and there'll be more. See you later.